The photoelectric effect can be observed in the following experiment. Take a piece of material, like gold, and put it in vacuum. Now illuminate it with light. If the light is of sufficient frequency, electrons will be emitted with varying kinetic energy. This electron emission does not depend on intensity of the light. Quantitatively, it looks like this. If you graph the kinetic energy of the electron against the frequency of the incident light, we will see that below a certain threshold frequency there is no emission of electrons at all, even if the intensity of the light is very high. Simply, the frequency is too low. If the frequency is above the threshold, we do observe photoemission of electrons. And the kinetic energy, that is the velocity of the electrons, increases linearly with frequency. Albert Einstein explained this photoelectric effect back in 1905 and received the Nobel Prize in 1921 for this. His explanation was revolutionary at his time, since he utilized the then new concept of photons. Simply put, one photon leads to the emission of one electron if it has sufficient energy. The energy of a photon is h nu, where nu is the, light, the frequency of the light, and h is Planck's constant. This energy is used to eject the electron from the material, which requires a certain amount of energy denoted by uppercase letter phi and called <clears throat> the work function. Any excess energy is carried away by the electron in terms of kinetic energy, which is, of course, one-half mv squared. The key concept here is the work function. It is the energy required to eject an electron from the material to just outside the surface. In that sense, it's very similar to an ionization energy. Work functions are energies, and they are commonly measured in electron volts. For example, osmium is the element with the largest work function of about 5.9 electron volts. On the other end, cesium has the lowest uh, work function among the elements, 1.95 electron volts. The work function not only depends on the material, but also on the surface light is incident. For example, for gold, the specific surface determines whether the work function is anywhere between 5.31 or 5.47 electron volts. One device that utilizes the photoelectric effect is the photomultiplier tube. Or PMT for short. It consists of a vacuum tube with a window. Behind the window there is a photocathode with a low work function material. Behind the fourth cathode, there is a series of electrodes that lead all the way to the last electrode that collects the current, and which is called the anode. An incident photon ejects an electron from the photocathode, which is then accelerated by a voltage to the first electrode, where it itself ejects multiple electrons that are accelerated to the secondary electrode. This cascade of electrodes then leads to an avalanche of electrons that eventually reach the last electrode, the anode, where the current is measured. The current is therefore proportional to the number of incident photons per unit time. A photomultiplier tube is a very sensitive optical detector. It can measure extremely low light intensities.